Today we're going to be looking at the aviation fuel operation. We'll follow the product right from the delivery right to the aircraft wing. We'll look at the different products, Avgas and Jet A1, and all the important quality checks that must be carried out before the actual product is offloaded into the storage. To confirm, we have on specification fuel all the time, every time, which means clear and bright, no water or sediment, and within specification limits. Here we have the road bridger at the depot, which would have been standing for five minutes to let the product settle. The vehicle will have been earthed and during that time the documentation from the refinery certificate to the release certificate would have been checked. The staff would be checking that the product number matches the vehicle number on the paperwork and lastly that the seal numbers from the trucks matches the seal numbers on the documentation. Here we can see the seal being removed from the delivery pots and the different compartments. You can actually have multiple compartments on the same vehicle, so it's very important that these are checked to ensure that you are offloading the product that was ordered. Here we can see the driver taking the sample checks from the different compartments. It is very important that the fuel is checked for quality before it is offloaded into the storage. The bonding cable is always connected between the bucket and the vehicle to stop any static electricity or sparks. And here we have a lovely sample of Avgas fuel. It is very important that the density of the product is checked. This applies to all types of fuels. The temperature is tetan and the density is corrected at 15 degrees C for all fuel types. It is very important that hydrometers and thermometers are controlled and checked on a regular basis. Here we have the cross reference from the density at 15 degrees C. This is checked against the refinery and release certificates to make sure they are well within tolerance. A visual check is also important to check there is no water, dirt or sediment present. Refinery lab report will include the product type, the specification of the product and the specification limits. Also included on the laboratory report will be the batch number and the tank that the fuel was taken from at the refinery. Last but not least, the driver will have the release certificate to show the specification limits when the product was loaded at the refinery and these will be checked at the location to make sure they're within limits. The documentation that you can see here is to do with the retention sample. A retention sample is kept for all batches which are kept for either seven days or until the batch is changed. This is to ensure traceability in the event of any accident or incident. So once the product has been checked and the product is within limits and specification, then the product can be offloaded into the storage. Here we see the operator using dead man's control, which should be checked every 30 seconds and the green light will prompt the operator to do so. Sometimes air bubbles can become trapped within pipes and airlines. These can cause the operator to stop and recirculate the system. Once the product is flowing, it is very important that DP gauges, differential pressure gauges, are monitored on a regular basis. As you can see here, we have various gauges, emergency stop buttons and other test points. Also very important is the tank capacity limits, making sure there is enough haulage space for the product being delivered. And all electrical systems and mobile phones being used must be intrinsically safe. All the correct filters for Avgas must include inspection dates and change dates and the addition numbers for the filters. Here we can see a nice example of a PRT tank or product recovery tank. Emergency stop buttons should be checked on a quarterly basis. On the side of the tanks you can see the correct signage with clear text of the inspection dates. Road bridges can be offloaded with what we call DCD or driver controlled deliveries. But in this case, the depot staff are present to complete all the quality checks. Compartment controls must be closed off before the product compartment is changed over, making sure the hoses are connected securely and the caps are reinstalled. The driver and depot staff must be wearing the correct PPE at all times. This must include safety glasses, anti-static clothing, safety boots, and this must include ankle protection and last but not least, safety gloves. Once the product has been offloaded, the checks must be completed on the vehicle itself and also the paperwork. 
The driver will reinstall the caps to stop any contamination within the hoses. Once all the caps have been secured, the hoses will be loaded back correctly and safely onto the truck. Finally, all paperwork must be checked and signed off. As we've mentioned before, documentation and service records are very important. All forms should be fully completed as these forms and documents are legal documentation. The road bridger driver will also conduct their own vehicle safety checks before moving off. They will walk all the way around the vehicle, checking all compartments are secure and safety equipment is still in place. Each vehicle will have the correct safety signage for the product being carried and all emergency contact numbers and product details are clearly visible in case of any accidents or incidents occurring. The vehicle should be in good roadworthy condition so the driver will also be checking tyres for wear and damage, lights and general condition of the vehicle.